Hi everybody, it's Karen Sullivan at lifehealthmore.net and here is the beginning of the programming for the month of June and if those of you that are following me have noticed that June is going to be the month of figuring out your why, what it is that you want to do, what it is that you want for your life. And so I thought that I would start with talking about, you know, what's the point of life? I mean, when you think about it, we all die, okay? And regardless of what you believe, this is not a discussion on religion, but regardless of what you believe, we all know that life ends. We live and then life ends. Think about children. You know, I teach a preschoolers class at the RecPlex, and the children are always excited about anticipating the next thing. Well, you know, that's what we would all do as adults, too. And they'll say, I'm almost four. Well, there'll be four in about eight months, but that's the next phase for them. You know, I'm almost four. And then after we do that, well, then I'm almost in kindergarten or I am in kindergarten and I will be in first grade. And then you're looking for graduation, graduation from high school. What are you going to do for your life? And we're always looking ahead, looking ahead, looking ahead. And actually, I think at that point, kids is in high school and then in some of that college time, we, we want to be adults. We, you know, we want to be an adult. We want to be uh, free to make decisions and have no, you know, parent or whoever telling us what to do. And so we really push for being an adult. Now, as an adult, I could say, you know, it's not all it cracked up to be. Everybody just grossly overbid, oversold the whole adult thing because it's tough. There's a lot of tension. There's a lot of stress. There's things to do. You're taking care of your family. You're making you know, financial decisions. You have to worry about what the heck are you going to make for dinner tonight? You know, trying to get when your children are young and as long as they'll participate in this, trying to get them involved in spiritual life and going to church. Because I personally believe that's a really important thing to have for each individual to have so that they can have a faith and, a, and know that there is a power bigger than yourself to help you in times of struggle. Okay. We, we all want to do some, you know, better and bigger and better and bigger and better. Well, we end up getting stuck in this cycle of in order to live, we have to have things. And I don't mean extra frou-frou. I don't mean going out and buying a boat. I don't mean not, not that kind of thing. I'm talking about you need to have a place to live. You need to have a vehicle to be able to get you to where your work is. Unfortunately, that's the grim reality in cities. You know, people can rely on public transportation. We live in the suburbs and there is no public transportation. You can't afford to use a Lyft or a U an Uber because that's just impractical to go back and forth to work with that. So we have a car, we have a house. You have to have a bed in the house, at least. You have to have food. So those things you need to have. And you meet someone and start a family, then you have things in your home that you need a little bit more because eventually you will probably have children. I think 85 or 90 percent, I met some statistics of um, families, you know, couples together do decide to have children. And the ones that don't are involved with other things and they too have to pay for those sorts of things. So you know, life is just always this demanding thing. We need money. I have to do this job. I have to go here. Well, you know, I started to think about it in the day in, the day out business. When I'm working with clients and doing the one-on-one -on -one coaching, they are always striving to add into that uh, fitness aspect. But more importantly, you get people that kind of have this feeling of, you know, I've done this before. I'm not going to do it anymore. I spoke with a lady today whose husband is not well and he has, you know, had some health issues for a while. And she's like, I don't know what to do. I mean, there's really nothing that I could do. So you have this 
feeling of being, you know, distraught and stuck in this constant grind, you know, for one reason or another. Day in and day out, you know, as I say, it's a wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. Well, that just really stinks. But there is in psychology facts, studies and facts that going that we all want to have a purpose. We want to make a difference in the world, whether it is locally, whether it's in your neighborhood, trying to do a beautification project at the front of your neighborhood, whether it is helping an elderly neighbor, you want to make a difference because in doing that, that's when you have real joy and happiness. We can't go about looking to make joy and happiness. The fact of the matter is when you do that, you're focused so much internally that, you know, anything that you do is all for you. And the satisfaction doesn't truly come unless we are doing things for other people, whether it's, it could be your parents, it can be your neighborhood, it can be a bigger scale or your children. But that, that is an important thing is that life without purpose is just rote, routine, boring, it goes nowhere. And what happens is you become bored and disgruntled and frustrated, tremendously frustrated. So that's why, back it up, if you think about trying to get fit and healthy and make changes in your body and truly, truly living, if you don't have some sort of purpose in your life, then how are you going to build your plan? To have a goal for something, that's just a thing, and it's just about you. But you have to have the why, which is your heart's desire, which is something that goes deep down into your gut, that when you think, you know, I would like to do this. Now, I have used this example often where people talk about, I want to lose weight. Well, why do you want to lose weight? Because I really need to be in a size 10. And so, well, what's so important about a size 10? Well, I'm going to a class reunion and I don't want to go there a size 16 or an 18 or, you know, so I really want to get this weight off for that purpose. And then, you know, really, that doesn't mean anything. That is just an all about um, my looks, my outer appearance. And so when you ask yourself truthfully, but why does that matter? And then you might find yourself saying that there is a family illness that has its rears its ugly head. Maybe it's diabetes, maybe it's high blood pressure, and you're concerned for your health. Well, that's a more powerful reason. And so that that might be a better reason. You need to find the one that strikes a chord deep in your spirit and in your soul. Now, you know, building your building your dream about what you want to do. Um, sometimes takes a while. And on the 12th of this month, I'm doing a workshop in my home that's the beginning of this. And it's a vision board workshop. I have an old vision board of mine. Well, it says 2018, but let me hold it up a little bit. And it says St. Louis. To be really honest with you, this board I, I made in when we were in Atlanta. And I had made my mind up that I really wanted to come back to St. Louis. Our home is in St. Peter's. Atlanta was great, but my children were here. My friends were here and I wanted to come back here. So what I did was with this board, I just got letters and put St. Louis in. And it did say 2015 originally. It's been a long time since I've done this. So I want you to come. If you live in the area, there's limited seating. Contact me and let me know if you're interested in doing this. We do a tiny little workshop where we're, I mean, we have, it's an exercise. And it's where we think about building a dream for ourselves, a plan for ourselves. So I'll just sort of tell you what's on here. Now, of course, this cracks me up because... I have a picture of a black lab. Can you see that dog? So here's a picture of the black lab, which I truly, I had just lost my dog, Hank, when I did this. So I was not ready for a lab, but I like labs. And what is sleeping on the floor next to me now is my new dog that is a black lab. So that's kind of exciting. Then other things, I'd like to sleep builder. I want to build my wealth. I want to be well. I want to be compassionate. 
and shrimp. Shrimp is one of my favorite things. I used to be allergic and couldn't eat it, and now I can. It's terrific. I want happiness. I want to go home, welcome home, and I want to be mindful. And there's fruit, being my personal best, um, heart for love. So these things help to remind me where I want to do. What I like is dead center in the middle of the, the whole thing says thrive every day. Love it. So that's what this workshop is about. You get an idea initially, sort of a, a, a little statement about what it is that you'd like to do for yourself. And then we start going through magazines and we chat with our friends. It's a great time to sit together or there will be at least eight people in this workshop and we'll have glue sticks and um, we're going to use uh, cardstock and you'll be able to glue your stuff and go home with your wonderful, wonderful vision board, giving you vision for the future, trying to help you stay focused on what it is that you want to do. Now that's a great way to start, but not everybody is able to do that and not everybody lives here. And uh, if you are interested, then let me know and we'll get you on for the one that we're doing here, but we'll have to do something else long distance. Okay. Um, I just, I'll, I'll work with that in the next few weeks. So thinking about your dreams and your plans and everything. Uh, and I wanted to explain how I found my why and I'm going with my first level. I have a lot of very deeper level that are, that are so close to my heart. It's not anything that I share with people, but you know, I, I want to help you get started, help you to understand this. So I wanted to, in my life, I started doing personal training and that sort of came about only because I was working for Williamsburg Aquatic Club and I was at the time over 300 pounds and um, I was, I wasn't working for them. I could correct myself. I was on the board and during a board meeting, the, um, head coach Harold Baker was talking about he'd like to have a strength and conditioning coach, someone to work with the kids that were the top 16 swimmers or the quad A's and seniors, you know, in high school. So that they would work with them to get strength, strength training with the weights in the gym. And as they talked about it, I started thinking, and here I am with this just huge body sitting there listening to them thinking, I could do that. I could do that. So it, the conversation went on for a while and I piped up and I said, now I know I don't look like I know what I'm talking about, but I do. And I would love to apply for the job. So long story short, I applied for the job. I got the position. Um, then I got a certification as a personal trainer and I work with those swim kids at the same time I began working in a couple of the gyms um, in the area. I worked at the rec center where the kids were lifting. I, I got hired on there to do personal training and then I worked in another facility. Actually, I worked in a lot of places in Williamsburg simultaneously. It's a small community so I could hop around between the different facilities and private clubs and private homes. So as I started to recognize how I could influence people and help people, the most important thing that I recognized was what it made me feel like. It made me feel great joy. It made me feel happiness beyond what I ever expected because I was helping people to feel better. I was connecting them to themselves. I was, I was guiding them to places that they probably never imagined that they would ever be again. Um, so that started my thought process. And, and I'll say to you right now, it has continued and augmented from there, adding to it the fact that um, I had been using and taking and using the cleaning products and everything from my affiliate, which is Shackley Corporation. I've been doing that for years. And I saw the fact that so many people desperately needed some of the things that I was using and I was taking. So I started to integrate that into my work. And I am serious about the fact that, you know, 
I have something I can tell you about. I have something I can teach you. I can help you on a physical level. I can help you nutritionally and I can help people um, even in an emotional level. And so that's what I have strived to do for 25 plus years to get people to be the best version of themselves. And that is actually kind of my little mantra for this year to get everybody really excited about, about feeling better. So for me, my why is why do I do what I'm doing? Because I feel like I have a gift to share with everybody about fitness and being whole and living. And do I have it all figured out? Oh, heck no. No, I am a work in progress. But together we can do it. Start with my guidance, the things that I have to offer and go from there. Now my book, The Zen of Weight Loss came out in 2012 and 2013, 12. And um, it was followed in 2015 by Your Perfect Food Plan. Those are available on Amazon. And the Zen of Weight Loss is actually in uh, ebook form too. But it's about a mindful, livable approach to fitness. So it's my whole thought processes along with my co-author Jerry Levesque which by the way it's Jerry's birthday today happy birthday Jerry and um, so that that information is in the book that sort of is a good groundwork it's sort of the cornerstone of my work and from there I have just expanded my my approach to people and coming up like with the workshops I'm doing a meditation workshop beginning meditation in June and an advanced meditation in July along with this vision board thing so those things I'm offering to you there's no charge for them it's something where we're going to come together and we're going to help support each other in our efforts to become the best version of ourselves so what am I asking you for? What I'm asking you for is to take the time to share your story with me. My story has been, there you hear it. And in addition to that, my husband had lost his job uh, five years ago and we struggled for a great deal of time. And I, I sort of wish, yeah, no, I don't sort of wish. I do absolutely wish that I had really stepped up my pro, my, approach in my work with my Shackley business before because I think it would have helped us greatly. I know it would have helped us greatly, but in the meantime, I'm doing that now. So that's what I'm doing. Ask me about how to process your why and integrate it into your life. And just, I will, I have a private answer for you. It will depend on the information you give me and I would be glad to coach you for you know a 15 20 minute phone call so let's let's do that I'd like you to comment I'd love to talk to you Karen and then I'll get in touch with you and we'll and we'll do carry on a conversation so how about if 2018 is not only an opportunity for you to become the very best version of yourself but also to have the very best life possible the best life possible so that you are that you never have to stress out about where you're going what you're doing what your job is that you can become your own boss and I just think it might be a really fun thing just to imagine and dream so think about that and in the meantime if that's not your bailiwick then you need to make sure you have your motivation behind getting healthy getting strong and being happier. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Take care now.